hours of a throne that is about to come. So your altar can become a landing place. It is connected to a throne in the spirit. And the Bible says whether they are visible, that means the things on in heaven respond to the things on earth. The things visible respond to the things invisible. The things that are thrones respond to dominion. That means if on earth we have dominion, it is because we are connected to a throne in the spirit. So when God wants to reshape a city, wants to, wants to infuse his life and civilization into a place, a country, a territory, the first thing he does is to do spiritual mapping that make people begin to pray. If God selects a man who say he is not fair, so he will bring the same opportunity to everybody as it was, are we together? As it was in Esther chapter 1 and 2, where the king's eunuch said, send these eunuchs to go and look for virgins throughout the entire land. And the seven eunuchs went out, which is a representative of the seven spirits of God. They went to go and search for people and brought everybody that was a virgin. But being a virgin is not the same thing as being enthroned. They are certain consecrations you must go to be able to host the throne. So as we are all praying, the people whose altar have the capacity to host a throne, meaning we never have dominion on the earth until a throne is situated. He says, thy kingdom come. How will the kingdom come? Number one is his throne will first of all come. Anywhere his throne is established, his dominion will be enforced. Are you getting the point? His throne brings about his dominion. So your altar, your prayer life, guess what? Satan doesn't fight anything the way he fights your altar. Because a priest, you tend over the altar. But what happens? Are we together? Are we together? Have you read the book of 2 Kings chapter 18 from, from, from verse 45 downwards? When Elijah began to pray on the altar, what did he do? He sent someone to go and look upwards. While his knees was bent to his leg, he asked someone to keep looking upwards. Because if altars are being raised well, a, something will respond in the heavens. A throne will respond well. Are you getting my point? That's why we are, that's why we emphasize prayer emphasis. That's why we emphasize prayer. That is not, not as though we want us to pray. It's because we don't know who amongst us may have the capacity to invite someone to come. Are we together? Many a times when you see angels in a meeting, it's not because the man of God was powerful. Not necessarily. Angels come but they land upon the altars of men. It can be one sister back there praying and as she is praying, are we together? Have you ever noticed when we are praying and praying then suddenly the anointing just drops upon somebody and the person begins to shout? That shout is not just a shout. Is that, are we together? Before the anointing we begin to up in a place somebody has to somebody is a trumpet must release the sound so you you are hearing somebody shouting it's not just the manifestation of the anointing it's a release of angelic movements so the person shouting is a sign that the anointing has been activated to begin to move so these things are beyond it's not just that you are anointed these spiritual operations are just showing you that the throne is about to enter so if right now the anointing the anointing will hardly fall in this place until somebody responds to it first. That person that responds to it is the person that gives permission for the operation of the anointing. So the hardest thing to do is to find someone who is aligned to allow that anointing rest upon him. The moment that that anointing rests, it begins to spread across. That person has an altar that angels can land upon. You getting my point? So they are thrones and they are what? Dominions. God's intention. Listen. We ascend this holy mountain. Ah, yeah. Lift up. This holy mountain So you see what's going on? 
visible and invisible thrones thrones lead to the establishments of dominions the reason why healing will happen in your area or your land is not just because you have a healing gift it's because you may not know but there is a healing throne on the earth and there are people who erected the altars to host that healing throne though are we together so you can find that in an entire city in an entire state there are only six thrones there but there are many dominions there are many what oh my god one of the things we must do if we must recover our lost heritage is to find the name of the throne that built our city yes there is a sin, there is a throne that built a city. Then from that throne, dominions will begin to expand. From dominions, principalities will begin to be established, then powers. So if you are operating in the power of God, there is a principality over that power. Did you catch what I said? How many of us in our lives presently know we have the power of God? Not the anointing, the power. You know, the difference between anointing and power. Every believer is anointed. Not every believer has power. Yeah, I'm sure you have, I've taught you about these ones. You know these ones. Every believer is anointed in, in Christ Jesus. But not every believer is giving power. Power is a trust. It's an investment. Under power, you don't need atmospheres to work in power. That's how you know it's power. The anointing works in atmospheres and sound. Power doesn't need any of these things. You can off the keyboard, power, power will still move. Power is a Custody, you become a custodian of an investment of God. You know you carry it. That's power. How God anointed Jesus Christ of the with what? With the Holy Ghost and power. You know you carry power. The, how do you know you carry power? Is that the things that make others afraid doesn't make you afraid in that matter? If somebody now wants to hear God that I don't have any fear, sit down. Let me tell you, it's not an anointing. Is what? Is a power. It's not a gift. It's a what? It's a power. Because people have tried and it works every time. In the morning, in the night. When we pray, when we don't pray. Power is a is God committing a dimension unto you. I may not boast of anything, but I boast I hear God. And I can hear him concerning any matter I choose to. It's a power. Now, are we together? The reason why I have power is because a principality received it first. So that power I carry has someone it is connected to. There is a principality. There is a, a prince. A what? If you are very sensitive, you realize that there is a rise of many princes in, in, in our land. Princes have risen in our lands of different capacities. If you are looking for people, are we together? In there are things that people have, there are things others are. You get the story? There are things you have, there are things others are. They are the things you have. You get the point? So God system, please follow me. Easy, follow me. Because tonight we will go far. You have a power. That power flows because of the alignment of a prince. The alignment of what? A prince. A prince went to war to get it. But you are enjoying of it, that same grace. Now, a prince is connected to a dominion. Dominion means the word Lord. Adonai. That's dominion. Dominus. A lord over a realm. A lord is connected to a throne. Let me give you an example. Should I? I didn't want to mention names, but should I give you names as an? Should I mention names? Now, when you look at this the city or the nation Nigeria, you realize that this nation is founded upon the throne of God's dealings with Apostle Joseph Ayo, Papa Malola. He is our throne. He is our what? He is the the throne that the Lord set. You see, that's why I didn't want to mention him. Because you say, why is it not my own church pastor as a, as a throne? It doesn't work like that. Your church pastor may, may be a, a recipient of power, 
but the throne has already been established in healing for example in the healing anointing for example you cannot neglect that a throne occupied by Alexander Dewey was the, that's the throne the man's altar raised so an altar is what you raise the throne is what comes to sit upon it Jesus. you get my point that that man began a throne of healing and from him many others began to drink of that well that we now have people who are dominions now in that realm but they got it from a throne Lester Sumra um, Ami Sempo McPherson you look at Catherine Kuma she's not even a throne she's a dominion she's a partaker of that grace John G. Lake all of them became partakers they became dominions of that throne then we look now towards the principalities of that throne now you find men that will work in the healing anointing, Pastor Chris Yakilome. You find men like Benny Hinn. You find people like Johnson Suleiman. These are what? These are principalities. They are princes in that same realm. But they will always tell you that they are connected to these people that were connected to the throne. Are you getting me? Now you have a healing anointing. Something is moving in your head when you feel the power. You must find the people that are connected to that stream. Are you getting my point? In the prophetic, whether you like it or not, whether you argue it or not, there are people who became the thrones. No one except William Branham. He sat on the throne of that office. His own was not even a gift, his own was a nature. His own was not, you know, a gift operates, operates, or is operational. A nature is always there. He said he doesn't enter the spirit realm. He leaves the spirit realm. Wait, let me see God. Let me